Thanks, everyone. Um, so, so I started off with a problem that I hope, well, okay, so what is the story? So the story is like, we all love to compute floor homology theories, but it's better if your floor homology theory can say something that's not within the realm of floor homology. So I started to do that. Um, the some things I wanted to say something about Kalabi for various uh, symplectomorphisms of surfaces, which are not necessarily Hamiltonians. I haven't like sorted out all the surface dynamics details because you had to first work on the like floor homology machine powering everything. Um, so what I was going to do is kind of like start with like work in progress and then work my way down to like the theorem that I proved about not filtered ECH. And then there won't be any more time for me to tell you about not filtered ECH. So Morgan will probably tell you about not filtered ECH. And, like, so the original motivation, these are at least like nice chalkboards. They're much better quality than the ones at the Simon Center that like, I don't know if you, well, you guys didn't go to the current Ishi Moors in the Simon Center, but mm -hmm. like they tried to get chalkboards like they have in uh, Simone, but they like rattle when you write on them. And so people try to like hold the chalkboard still while they write on them. Mm -hmm. We want to study some plectomorphisms of punctured surfaces of genus G with an exact symplectic form. And then the boundary of my surface of genus G. Well, originally uh, we were doing it with T2 Q naughts because then you can get that the genus um, was equal to. Q minus one over two. And so since Q is odd, that would give you all surfaces of all genus. But then, um, I don't know, we also did it for TPQ. And then your genus is equal to P minus one times Q minus one over two. Maybe this is not so exciting. Okay. And then we want um, the symplectomorphism to be freely isotopic to the right-handed TQ representative of the, well, the Nielsen-Thurston representative this should be PQ periodic. Of the uh, mapping class group of this punctured surface. Um, and we also want psi to be rotation near the boundary. Okay, so what's okay? So basically, we are going to use an open book to like package everything together. Um, so the pages of our open book are going to be the surfaces of genus G, and then the binding is going to be a TPQ torus knot. Um, and there's a way to construct um, like a model open book if you use. So I'm using the word like right handed, which is not really a surface dynamics word, but it's a word we know from contact geometry because we want to construct. Um, an open book for the standard uh, contact structure on S3. And so like when you write down your, there's a, I think it's like, it's 4G plus two is like the GAN that you write down when you look at mapping class group elements. And then when you click your GAN, that corresponds to different periodic representatives of the mapping class group. Um, so if you click your GAN right-handed versus left-handed, that corresponds to using like a right-handed torus knot versus a left-handed torus knot. But since we want a contact structure on S3, which is tight, we don't want to do left-handed things. Um, and then you want to have this bound, this uh, rotation on the boundary condition by two pi over PQ plus delta. Um, we don't need delta to be, uh, like we can let delta be equal to zero, but then if you're trying to understand periodic points, of these symplectomorphisms, it's kind of boring if your symplectomorphism is already like honestly um, rotation by a rational number, but maybe it's like interesting that you can still do this. 
Um, but it's like more interesting to think about if you're slightly bigger than PQ uh, rotation on the boundary. Um, and the fun fact is that you don't need to assume that size Hamiltonian. Um, and the idea is that we're not going to typically be looking at some plectomorphisms, which are in the um, identity component of the group of um, Hamiltonian some plectomorphisms, um, which kind of makes sense if we want to think about things which are isotopic to PQ periodic Nielsen Thurston representatives. Um, and you can actually like check an exactness condition that you need in order to define Calabi. Um, we checked it for like the T23. Uh, construction, and we expect you can do it for the TPQ construction, but you have to chase through like Dane twists, which I haven't done yet. Okay, so then so now I have to tell you like what is the Calabi invariant and what is the statement? So the action function. of psi with respect to the primitive beta, it is the unique uh, function f, which typically depends on psi and beta, but actually like we check that for p two three, and this should be true for pq, that you can actually remove the dependence um, on beta. Um, and then you want df, to be equal to the pullback of beta under psi minus beta, and then you want this boundary rotation condition to hold. Can I ask a question? Uh -huh. So this, so this, uh, this is a unique mapping class only. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, it's not an always Hamiltonian. It's, is it like a periodic? So it's a periodic in the sense that like a period, like after some amounts of, uh, so PQ periodic means that after some amount of comp, like iteration, PQ iterations, it's, it's Hamiltonian as top of the identity. No, it doesn't have to be Hamiltonian isotropic to the identity. So this like, uh, this like right-handed PQ periodic Nielsen Thurston representative. This is like you're, there's two PQ periodic Nielsen Thurston representatives of the mapping class group, um, and we want one. We just want to pick out the one which is right-handed so that the open book construction makes sense. Um, so but there's nothing like you're assuming about Hamiltonians. The point though is that like getting this exactness condition to hold, like it holds automatically if um, psi is Hamiltonian, but it doesn't have to be Hamiltonian. But, but is it PQ periodic in the Nielsen Thurston classification sense? Some power? Yeah, yeah, it's in the Nielsen Thurston classification sense. So that when you take it to some power, you get the idea. Yeah, it feels like and yeah okay, so that, uh, so then, but it doesn't, Okay, uh, that, I'll, ask, I'll ask after. I don't want to go your real. I mean, it would be like you would want the PQ power of this to be really isotopic to the identity, but I don't know. That but not Hamiltonian isotopic. I don't know that it, it doesn't, I don't think you need it to be Hamiltonian isotopic. Okay. And so uh, later on, the action function is just going to be like the time that it takes for the rain flow to come back in your open book decomposition. And the idea is that the action function is kind of measuring how much psi distorts your curves. And then the Calabi invariance is the uh, average of the action function mole. So usually it depends on this choice of one form. But we can at least show that for T23, it doesn't depend on the choice of one form. Um, and I'm gonna use like Calabi of psi is equal to V of psi because this V is gonna correspond to some volume of an open book. Um, and this is just gonna be the integral over the surface of F times omega. 
Um, okay, then we have like some more definitions. So an L tuple gamma, which will correspond to a ray orbit of my open book. This is going to be an L tuple of points. Um, and this is a periodic orbit. If um, psi of xi is equal to xi plus one mod L, and L is equal to the period of gamma, um, the total action, which will correspond to the total action of a ray orbit later, this is just going to be the sum for my equals one to L of f of each of the xi's. And then you have the mean action which is just the total action divided by the period. And uh, part of the reason why I'm using like an L for the period is because this L is gonna turn into like some linking number that's gonna show up. Okay, so then the work in progress is that um, oh, let's psi be as I just erased. Um, we want f to be greater than zero and to lobby to be less than one over pq plus delta. Then the infimum of the mean action for any uh, periodic orbit of the symplectomorphism is bounded above by Kaladi. So, so here, that is really, it's a bit big. So now I want to say something. Okay. Now I want to say something about like what is the contact reinterpretation, um, and then I'll slowly like move through the things that we have proven in the contact study, um, and then there's like a moderate amount of effort to like prove this statement, which involves like chasing through inequalities. It's possible that we can remove. Um, like some of the assumptions, so like in work by uh, Arbork Piranipasov, he figured out um, how to go from like your rational rotation to a pseudo rotation, but part of the difficulty is that it's not completely obvious like what will go through and what won't go through, um, because the mapping path group of a surface of genus G, which is bigger than zero, is a little bit more complicated. So this was can I have a question? Sure. So this was originally, I mean, I remember Michael's paper about this. This is originally something Umberto asked about. Is that the was that the was that the source of this kind of inequality, or is there like something that um so the history is like a little bit longer? So I think this was like back when people didn't think that maybe when people were trying to like disprove Viterbo's conjecture, mm -hmm. and it was like before the Michael had some like question that like meant that like dynamically convex implied convex and then uh, Alberto and Umberto and Pedro came up with those examples which showed that there was like a dynamically convex thing with a systolic that satisfied a systolic inequality that it wouldn't satisfy if like it was convex or like would provide a counterexample to Viterbo's conjecture. So then um, the reason why Michael had thought it was true was because he wanted to use something about service dynamics to prove something for rate flows on S3, which was like the standard practice that everyone did to do these like two or infinitely many type arguments. Uh -huh. 
Um, but that like procedure didn't go through at the level he was thinking of. And so instead, um, it's like a Umberto observed that you could go the opposite direction, which was to use something about ray flows to prove something about um, surface dynamics. And so then in that case, the like statement was um, size, just uh, irrational rotation of the disk near the boundary. Um, and then like you don't have this Kalabi thing turns into like a one over whatever the irrational rotation number is on the back. Okay, sorry. This, it depends on if you want this to be the irrational rotation on the boundary, we're also gonna have a rotation number for a ray orbit, which will be the binding that will show up. So if this is like the rotation on the boundary, then like the ray orbit rotation number is the inverse of that. Uh -huh. So like you can say this is like, but oh, whatever, anyways. So you just want one over some rational rotation number. And then there's a corresponding statement about like rave dynamics. Uh -huh. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. It's just that, and then also for this thing, I mean, this sort of saying that like the, the av like the total action over the whole average, over the whole surface is sort of like, there has to be like a periodic orb, sort of a sequence of periodic orbits that are sort of attaining yeah, yeah. That, so that bound. implicit in this is like the existence of a periodic orbit. Or, yeah, yeah, for example. Okay. So the pages are going to be surfaces of genus. Uh, G. Uh, the binding is a TPQ knot. So when Michael did this, it was just like the disk uh, open book decomposition of the ellipsoid. Um, and then he was just looking at an irrational ellipsoid. Um, then you have the volume of the open book is equal to Calabi. Uh, you have that the action of the binding is equal to one. Um, and we're going to call this binding orbit B. And Um, and we also want the binding orbit B to be elliptic with rotation number. Uh, in this case, it's going to be P, Q plus delta. So there's like when you say, okay, so normally, like you can't just say, like, there's a well defined rotation number, but if you're a homology sphere, um, you can define this rotation number in terms of a trivialization so that the push off of the binding um, or the ray orbit more generally of itself has linking number zero. So it's not like the traditional trivialization you use in SFT where um, you want the trivialization to extend over any surface uh, which uh, spans the orbit. But there is like a way to talk about a rotation number, which makes more sense from like the theory of transverse knots. And the point is that the like traditional SFT style trivialization will differ from this like push off self linking zero trivialization by the um, self linking number of the knot. And then uh, there'll be a bijection between the periodic orbits of this open book minus the binding and the periodic points of the symplectomorphism psi so that the total action is symplectic action and the period is the intersection with the zero, the like zero page. Okay, so then that like translates into a statement about linking with the binding.
part of the like difficulty in terms of like taking this construction and generalizing it fully so that you don't have this constraint about um, like Kalabi and like the connection with the rotation number is that um, when you're looking at the irrational ellipsoid, you just like fiddle with the A and B parameters of your irrational ellipsoid to realize any like irrational rotation number. But if you're looking at an open book decomposition where the surfaces are genus P minus one over Q minus one over two, then you're going to be stuck with having the binding be a TPQ knot. And then if you look at the cipher, um, the like corresponding cipher vibration or the cipher fiber space, you're going to be stuck with the rotation number, which is going to be PQ plus delta. So there's kind of like a natural like geometry hiding in the background. And probably you could change this rotation number, but then you would need to like understand how not filtered ECH changes and like the presence of a Dane twist and glue in a solid porous and like soup up this open composition. Sure, I have a question. So, so here on the map, what is the assumption on the, on the, on the side on the boundary? So you're asking this the rotation of the boundary? Or? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's the return map of the ray flow is psi with return time t, or sorry, return time given by this action map. Okay, but I'm just wondering like, which in general, like what types of like symplectomorphisms I can realize as return maps of open books. And it seems like you, you need to ask something at the boundary. And in this case, are you asking that psi is some sort of like rotation at the boundary? I think you wrote it. Yeah, yeah, you need it to be, so this is like, um, this assumes uh, psi is like really isotopic. And uh, rotation on the boundary by um, two pi over p q plus delta. And, and is this rotation on the boundary sort of like really needed? I, I, can I just ask that? We so it's possible that like some of the like if you're doing the not filtered ECH construction, it forces you to have this like rotation on the boundary condition, it's possible that you might be able to relax it to like a pseudo rotation using um, our board's uh, trick. It's unclear if that will work or not. So I just haven't like sat down and like gone through the specifics because you have to like glue in an annulus and like see what happens and like. Sorry. Some sort of cut. Which, like our board had like a construction where you didn't have to do like a uh, symplectic or like a contact type cut because it was just like a disc and so like there was like kind of like a, a nice trick you could do and like when Hutchins did it he was working with the irrational ellipsoid so then he just changed the um, parameters of the ellipsoid so that you could realize any rotation number that you wanted as long as it was irrational. So particularly if, if the map is like the identity of the boundary, like extends continuously as the identity of the boundary, like could presumably do the similar construction. Yeah, yeah. Like for linear maps. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, I mean, somehow, like, I don't know, like, I just wanted to do something with surface dynamics. And so I just like looked at what the contact geometry was telling me, but um, presumably like the contact geometry, if you have like a specific problem in mind, like earlier, then like you can do this whole like framework, but then your theorem won't like do something about surface dynamics, do something about billiards. But really, um, What you're doing is uh, when you run this like game with not filtered ECH, you're getting um, this like volume is gonna come to you. Like there's gonna be a relationship between the volume and the action by the ECH vial law. And then this like linking threshold um, that's gonna show up comes from not filtered ECH, which is a topological theory.
And the, the contact form on the standard three sphere. What volume of lambda equal to V? Suppose lambda is compatible with an open book decomposition in which one the pages the pages are surfaces minus e um, the binding has action one and it is elliptic with rotation and this be the same as I wrote before. Um, and three, we want the volume of the open book. V1 over PQ plus delta. Then there exists a ray orbit, which is not the binding. And this is actually going to be uh, a generator from ECH. So really it's a rave orbit set. Um, and the infimum of the action of the orbit divided by the linking number of the orbit with the binding is bounded above by the square root of the volume divided by the rotation. And then the question is like, how do we prove this theorem? And the way that we prove this theorem, we can get a not to go through the CH um, and the bio law. I guess, sorry. Wait, so that's what, yeah, yeah. there exists a ray orbit such that that. Um, so the inf over is the inf. Over the, or is it just is it that the single orbit that satisfies this inequality? There's at least one orbit which satisfies this inequality. Okay. And this is like the mint, like this inequality also realizes the infimo of the action over the limit. I see. So where the orbit is equal to that, the, yeah, so, the action the action over the length linking is equal to that infimo. Um. So there's an orbit set realizing this. Infimum. There's a ray orbit set realizing this. Infimum. Oh, okay. So I'm going to write down like the statement involving not filtered. Well, it's not actually going to involve not filtered ECH, but it's the statement which you get from not filtered ECH. And that statement tells you that the action is always bounded above by volume plus uh, epsilon, because, or well, it's action squared divided by 2K is less than or equal to volume. Plus epsilon, so that's coming from the vial law. And then the linking number is coming from this like not filtration on ECH, um, where you have like linking plus rotation number has to be less than or equal to um, like the NKs that show up from uh, ECH capacitors. So you basically like get a sharp bound on linking from ECH capacitors, and then you can run this game. Um, oh, I should have said something earlier. Um, okay, so for surface dynamics, um, so this is coming from uh, in 2015, Hutchings proved this for irrational rotations. Um, near the boundary and then uh, in, uh, plus, uh, uh, generalize this I think in I forget exactly it's either like 2020 or 2021 um, so he like generalized so 
that um, psi is just a pseudo rotation near the boundary. Then um, Weiler looked at um, some plectomorphisms of the annulus with a twist condition. And so what's the pseudo rotation near the boundary? That pseudo rotation is a global condition. Uh, I don't know exactly. I just know that it's pseudo rotation near the boundary. It's probably agreed pseudo rotation in fact, but that's a sense of statement. Okay. So, okay. Is the pseudo rotation on the boundary? Anyway, this, you can yeah, weaken yeah, the slight yeah, rotation. No, no, it's just like anyways. And then um there's also work by and Rohill. And here they do this, they approve an analogous statement. Um, but you have to be looking at Hamiltonians. So here you have an arbitrary compact surface with boundary. No rotation condition on a boundary Lagrangian. And psi needs to be a C infinity. And then I put generic in quotes because it's not generic in like the traditional sense because there's no like bare set, but they have like it's an equidistribution result. And so they're using like genericity because you're getting like equidistribution of wave orbits. And so it will hold like um, because of the equidistribution result for wave orbits. And so you're looking at a Hamiltonian in a rational isotopy class. What we prove is that suppose you have okay, so this is the same thing as before. So that the binding is the T well, okay. You just need a ray orbit, it doesn't have to be the binding. It's kind of like boring if like delta is zero in terms of the perspective of like proving the existence of a ray orbit, but you still get the linking bound. So for all epsilon greater than zero, if K is sufficiently large, there exists a ray um, orbit set, gamma not including the binding, So B doesn't have to be a binding in this setting. You just need B to be um, a transverse. Well, you just need B to be a TPQ porous knot. Um, and then you have from the vial law that the action of gamma plus M times the action of beta squared. So this is supposed to represent the action of an arbitrary orbit set given by gamma B to the M. This is less than or equal to the volume of S3 lambda plus epsilon. So this thing here comes from the vial law. And the new thing is the not filter VCH computation. And it says that um, the linking number of gamma with the binding plus PQ plus delta times M is greater than or equal to. Um, the kth element of the sequence given by P, Q plus like um, some function that depends on NK, P, Q. That's basically telling you how many times um, the binding appears in the kth element of the like 
sequence of the P's and Q's that you add up. Um, so this is like coming from like some threshold number. It's possible that this like um, function is going to give you like M. And so these two things would cancel, but it's not like entirely clear. But anyways, there's some like way to figure out like what number this is, but it's probably not that like exciting to figure out. Okay. Um, great. So I'll see if you guys have questions. So this one is from the this second thing is from the ECH index. Is some ECH index calculation or something? Yeah. So this is from like so, the computation of that filtered ECH that we're in. Okay. So that was like the thing I was going to explain. I see, but it is something about the grade, the, the grading or the filtration or something. Like, what is this inequality in on the? So this is saying that like the linking number of the grave orbit, which set which doesn't include the binding with the binding plus like the rotation number of the orbit times m is always bounded below by um what would be like the um minimal well it's not sick there's a contact form that you could write down that would extract like this thing uh as the well maybe i should just write it down Okay, so the point okay, is that I, this also is like something you're going to explain. Yeah, this is going to turn I, into I, like, I, this, yeah. I mean, somehow the point is that like, when we do, when we like generalize this like not filtered ECH construction to this setting and do the computation, you basically get a result that says that this like linking threshold, which determines the filtration, the not filtration on ECH is like um, the minimal like filtration level that you need to get a non- zero element of ECH is realized by the like um, eighth ECH capacity for um, one over P one over Q times PQ, where PQ is like coming from a linking number. Other comments or questions? Here's like the sorry. I feel like I wrote the same thing just slightly different eight three times. But I thought like starting with not filter ECH was not the way to go. Okay. So like this be the standard. You just want the standard like context structure on S3 and then. Let B not be the standard right handed P Q not. So, um, and this needs to have self linking number P Q minus P minus Q. Turns out this, this self linking number will govern the rotation number of a ray of orbit, which realizes this like right-handed uh, torus knot. But you can say that it's the standard right-handed torus knot with this self-linking number um, because there's a result by Etnayer from the 1999 that says up to transverse isotopy of transverse right-handed torus knots. This is the unique uh, transverse right handed TPQ knot with self linking equal to PQ minus P minus Q. So the point is just that um, by Etnayer, we know that uh, right handed torus knots, if they're transverse, that um, the only thing that governs them up to transverse isotopy is their self linking knot. Then for um, any natural number, we have that ECH 2K. I haven't told you what the filtration yet is, but I will of S E with respect to the TPQ um, torus knot, which is going to be a rave orbit. We have PQ plus delta. And this is the rotation number.
So this is uh, Z mod two Z. If R is greater than or equal to N K P Q plus some function that basically tells you how many like uh, the knots you would have with respect to like the way that we computed it. Zero else, and then it's going to be zero in every other degree. And the point, the point is that um, this not filtration of a generator set. Is equal to the linking number of gamma with B plus um, M times the rotation number of B. So this is the bad filtration that you use on ETH. And so you're getting like this statement here because um, if this wasn't true, then that would mean that um, right, the point is that you have to have some homologically significant element of not filtered ECH, and you know that it has to happen in at least this like um, thresh, this like not filtration threshold. And so then that's forcing this statement to be true. And because not filtered ECH is um, a topological invariant, meaning that it only depends on the choice of context structure, um, a like transverse not type for that realizes the rave orbit. Um, so you need to like have some preserved rave orbit, but here like we don't need a specific thing other than to know that it's a, a transverse torus knot with this self-linking number, um, which is the same thing as saying that the rotation number of the uh, knot that you realize is PQ plus delta. Um, but this computation only depends on these two things. And so as long as you're in this situation where you have some elliptic rave orbit with the prescribed rotation number, um, then that tells you that this linking number plus the rotation number times m is always bounded um, below by these like NK features. Okay. And the reason why that's like so helpful is because um, the only other spectral invariants that we have access to from embedded contact homology are going to be the capacities. But the capacities depend very strongly on the choice of contact form. And so this is nice because it's telling us some kind of quantitative information, but telling us that it doesn't depend that there's like a certain amount of independence on the choice of contact form as long as we have like some like special not preserved. What do you expect? And then the part of the like, um, like part of the reason why I'm not sure exactly like what can go through in terms of like uh, adapting like Parnapasov's like construction um, is because like that was like a cosmetic thing he could do after the fact. Um, whereas like here it's pretty unclear like how to construct a uh, three sphere which has a torus knot with a different rotation number. So like the natural open book decomposition of S3 along a torus knot, um, like if you either do that via like abstract um, uh, handle attachments or you do it from like the perspective of uh, cypher and fiber spaces, uh, you're going to be like stuck with this as your rotation number. Or you can have like a minus delta. It's not really like it's um, So, so there is 
a um, like model construction uh, to realize um, like an open book decomposition of S3 C standard along um, the right handed TPQ torus knot. Um, and you can do this in three different ways. Uh, so, one way is via like abstract handle attachment. Um, and this gives you the open book. And then um, you also know via like Kolan Honda because this open book is secretly coming from this PQ uh, periodic element of the mapping class group. This tells you that there's a cipher fiber space structure. There's nothing like deep going on here. They just like observed it. Um, and so you can write down the explicit cipher fiber space. Uh, it's not important. Um, the other thing is like this abstract handle attachment open book thing, you can like this is kind of important from the perspective of trying to say something like to say that you have more than just like a model open book decomposition coming from the usual like Milner vibration construction of the TPQ torus knot where you realize it is like C1 to the P plus C2 to the Q um, sitting inside of uh, C2 or C3, C2. Um, and so like, it's nice if you know that there's more open books that realize this construction. And then the third thing is that like by Kegel Lange, we know that um, the ciphered fiber space uh, corresponds, uh, is up to strict contact morphism. It is strictly contact morphic to um, the S1 bundle overweighted projective space with weights P and Q um, with Euler class negative one over PQ. Um, and here you use a contact form lambda PQ, which is one over two pi times the standard contact form. And then it's weighted um, with a P C1 squared plus Q Z2 squared. So like the idea is basically that um, you need to kind of like know the different ways to realize this three sphere along this chorus knot. And um, the like for different purposes, it is important to have it as an open book versus a cipher fiber space versus an S1 uh, bundle overweighted projective space. Um, but it's nice having it as this weighted bundle over projective space because then you can actually like have like a contact form that you can like use to compute the um, Conley-Zander indices and figure out the rate vector field um, and have to do a more spot type construction to use it. Um, and then in terms of actually computing the ECH index, we're using um, the cipher fiber space presentation and also the open book presentation. So that we can actually like understand what the linking number is um, and compute like the relative self intersection pairing for various uh, um, orbit sets. And then I guess one kind of like remarkable thing uh, is that this uh, NK PQ that shows up is exactly. Um, KQ times the kth ECH capacity associated to this contact. So the like degenerate uh, more spot situation is realizing the like minimal um, not filtration level for ECH. And so that's like kind of sick. Like, normally if you like compute the ECH capacities, like you're just happy and you're gonna say something about embedding problems. Um, and it would be nice if those like numbers were significant beyond embedding problems. 
And so the fact that they're showing up um, in terms of being the minimal not creation of uh, well, I guess it's not like so unexpected because like, what are you really doing to S3, especially if you're writing it down as like an Orbi bundle, but it's still like, um, we have 10 minutes left. I'm not okay. I mean, I could like start to say things about not filtered ECH, uh, but I think like I want to get anywhere, so I just play stop here and see you guys. Have to So here's a here's like a general question. So I I, I remember I talked to Louie about this one time. But like, what what is the what is like the like somehow this thing is like a topological invariant of like a transverse knot. Yeah. And uh and a contact structure. Yeah. And so like is there like uh, like what is this thing in other models of ECH so like for example Hager, what is the Hager floor version of this thing um because so, there's a lot of interest in like Hager floor homology for like yeah so you know, in knots. theory um well okay this like that filtration on ECH should be giving you like a concordance invariant of um transverse knots for the like concordance as a symplectic uh <clears throat> Comparison between the like contact manifolds, um, and so then that like would suggest that like not filtered ETH is somehow like realizing like the epsilon invariant if you do things correctly. Um, I mean, not like directly from this computation, but like the concordance invariant that exists in uh, Hagard Fleur is the epsilon invariant. Um, so presumably, like this should tell you something um, that might be reinterpreted in that context. But part of the issue is that uh, in like the isomorphism between ECH and Hagard Fleur, um, you like Colon, Pagini, and Honda do like this construction with open books. It doesn't matter if I have a book or not on the board, but they do like a sort of construction where they're like gluing in a torus so that the binding has like longer and longer action. So mm -hmm. it doesn't actually contribute to the chain complex. And so here, like the binding is like homologically significant and like is a generator um, in ECH. And so like you can't just like look at like what um like what the expected isomorphism between ECH and Hagard Fleur is telling you to try to like determine like what like orbit sets are going where. And then if you sit down and write down like um, Hagard Fleur not homology, uh, they use like a different complex than ECH and they have a bigrading on it that's like given um, like one of the bigradings is given by like the Alexander uh, polynomial grading. And you're not like seeing that directly from this computation. So it's not like you can just like write down not filtered ECH and write down like uh, Hagard not Fleur homology and be like, oh, look, they've computed the same thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it I doesn't really, yeah. I mean, this thing somehow has this angle parameter. So it wouldn't really make sense. In terms of, like this rotation parameter seems like. Yeah, so I mean, the one thing about the rotation parameter is that it is telling you the self linking number of the transverse knot. And so then, like, if you want to talk about like uh, transverse knots at the transverse isotopy, then like it would make sense that you would need to like know the like self linking number of the transverse knot and that it's also like showing up in your computation of that filter DCH because that self linking number turns into the rotation number. Mm -hmm. um, but like I haven't like sat down and like looked at what's going on with like the upsilon invariant enough to know like does it see like a self-linking number of torus knots or does it just like you yeah. know things about torus knots and that's it. Um, and like the only other paper about symplectic cohortisms between torus knots is a recent paper by Etnayer and Goya. And there they looked at like, I think their paper is like called like symplectic hats and caps. Yeah. And there they were just looking at cohortisms either from a torus knot to the empty set or the empty set to a torus knot. Um, and there's also like a concordance invariant in um, cyber Gwynn homology, um, 
And so like in theory, that is also like related to this, but I like haven't like sat down and like put that as a solution. But I think like it's not immediately identifiable like what the counterparts are because like we don't have like this great understanding of like there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence of generators. Um, and then of course, like how do you like how is like in Hagard floor, like how are you gonna like absorb the rotation number? And then like in cyber witten floor homology, like sure, uh, you don't like it's like totally reasonable that you'll see like more spot stuff associated to a circle bundle over weighted projective space. Um, but then like in terms of actually like, seeing what's going on with like um, generators and orbit sets, like it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, thanks, Victoria.